Hello all. Today we are going to see about the model configuration parameters in Simulink. Actually, first let me open a new model. Here lot of options available here. File, Edit, View, Display. So in that go to Simulation and you have an option called Model Configuration Parameters. If you are specifically looking for a code generation and a target platform kind of things, you can see those settings here in model configuration parameters. Here I am quickly walk through this settings here. So it starts with solver, data import or export and some optimization settings, diagnostics and uh, hardware target implementation and uh, model referencing and uh, target simulation and uh, uh, RTW workshop that is nothing but your code generation and even you can find and settings for HDL code with generation so first we will start with the solver so here we can uh, mention the start time and stop time of your simulation and the various solver options are you can take it from this drop down menu whether it may be a fixed step or variable step for a lot of automotive applications we go for variable step and what type of solver it's an ordinary differential equations 45 dormant prints so you can have an option to select from here so the maximum step size and relative tolerance a lot, a lot of uh, pa these parameters have an impact on your simulation so what are all the minimum steps here so zero crossing settings so you can find this here next it's like data import or export you can load your data from your workspace here from the input and you can load it with initial state and even you can export the data in of simulink data to your workspace with time output so how many data points it should have so lot of these settings we can have here so it's uh, logging the signal logging and uh, what is the uh, signal logging format it's, well, it's is it in the form of data set or model data logs and then the save options so uh, here we have two options like if we enable this checkbox we can save the simulation as a single object and also we can record and inspect simulation output after like a post processing kind of thing we can do here while we enable this and then coming to optimization we have signal parameters and state flow so optimization is nothing but your um, signal and parameters settings like it's like inline parameters or not and then uh, signal storage you reuse if we specifically look for code generation you can enable the local block outputs even you can reuse the block outputs so this is the settings over here and this is for state flow settings and the next is like diagnostics so when you run your when you start building your model you will be able to see lot of uh, commands running in the diagnostics window at the stage at the uh, stage of your build process so it's all related to the solver is it's an algebraic loop it's a block priority violation so these are all uh, mentioned as warning so if this happen it should uh, show as a warning not as an error as you all know an error stops a simulation but warning never so we have to be careful in setting selecting these settings here so this is specifically a zero crossing violation if it consecutively crosses zero is something odd or something uh, we can make it as an error here so solver data inconsistency so lot of options here for diagnostics next is like hardware implementation for example if you want to convert it into an embedded processor acceptable format uh, so that uh, based on the target platform we have to select the device vendor and the device type here there are many options and uh, vendor names here here you can find microchip st microelectronics texas instruments and you can find lot of uh, acceptable formats of those vendors here it's a device type it's a, whether it's a 16 bit embedded processor or 32 bit embedded processor we can find a, a lot of options over here so next is a model referencing so model referencing is like a, uh, like if you want to build a build your model to a c code or something then you have to 
select the settings over here so uh, if any if you want to rebuild your model automatically based on certain parameters or conditions you can select it here as always our own option is here if any changes detected in your model then it will start rebuild and if any changes in known dependencies detected and rebuild you can even select an option never here so it's a it's like a parallel it's like a, you can build a two subsystems in a model like enable if you enable the parallel model reference builds so corresponding options here here next is like simulation target here in matlab and stat flow you can enable the debugging animation enable overflow detection ensure responsiveness so these type of options are here so further if we drop down the simulation target you can see symbols and custom codes so you can add a directory here you can add a custom directory here you, where you can directly get those files when you are uh, when you are using a simulink not even if it's not in your path it's like uh, mex files mex generated mex64 or mex32 files generated can be directly taken from here and then code generation in code generation you can um, you can uh, reach a tlc file here target language compiler and a language c language here and lot of if a uh, lot of build process also here so before that at the time of build process you have to generate a make file over here it's nothing but make underscore rtw real rtw stands for real time workshop and also a template for uh, your make file and this is your code generation advisor which is which has options like debugging execution efficiency unspecified so check model before generating code you have to check your model before generating code so with the help of this uh, check model options and if you click your Uh, generate code only it will allow to generate code only it never build an application so so there is a lot of difference between your code your code generation and uh, building your application building your application requires further more dependencies so here is your code generation we have find reports comments symbols custom codes debug interface and final one is your hdl code settings hardware description language code generation this is your global settings and this is your test bench related settings and this is your eda tool scripts so when you start building your model in simulink you must definitely know how to configure this configuration parameters with respect to your model actually what are all the requirements you have to look your requirements and based on it you have to enter the settings over here the so that's it